Hi guys, welcome. Today's short tips and solution video is about baking Blender Bevel Shader normal maps using cycles and fixing artifacts along the way. I want to highlight this problem as you can see on the screen. If you are new to hard surface modeling or like me face random problems daily, I want to show how I fix this, which will hopefully help you if you encounter the same issue. I'm using my models as example because it doesn't really work for cubes or like simple shapes. First, you have your high poly model with the bevel shader. When you switch to render mode, you can see the bevel. It doesn't matter how many high poly objects you have. You can have as many as you want, just make sure they are in the same location as the low poly that you want to bake. Then you have your corresponding low poly unwrapped mesh. I'm grouping the high and low poly models together, but it's not required. After done positioning and grouping preparation, now it's time for the most important part, smoothing group. You need text tools for this, I'll link it down below. It's a free add-on for UV tasks if your low poly version is as messy as mine. The Blender Auto Smooth function might not work well, at least it doesn't work for me. After unwrapping, make sure to click Smooth by UV Island. This is the most important step to fix the artifacts. Now we're moving to the final part, baking. First, Choose your target low poly model. In the shader editor, add a new image texture. Create a new image at 1K, 2K, 4K, or 8K resolution. Depending on what resolution you want to bake, I usually do a 1K test bake first, and if everything's fine, I'll bake at a higher resolution. This is because 4K takes time, and if something's wrong, you can easily notice it in a 1K map. Artifacts like jagged lines can also be reduced with a high resolution output image. So let's bake at 1K for now. In the node editor, set up the normal map node as well. Use known color space for the image. In the render settings, set 32 for samples. Under the bake tab, choose normal and check select it to active. If you are using a cage, then choose cage. A cage is an object that wraps around the high poly. You can explode the high poly using mesh shrink flatten in edit mode to create the cage manually. When you do that, Blender will give you the distance number in the left corner. The cage is not necessary for me because the config number will do most of the job. However, if you want sophisticated control, you can use the cage function. Assuming we're not using a cage, manually type the extrusion number. This number is vital as it creates the cage by distance. If you are doing a realistic scene, the measurements will be easier. If not, try to explore the high poly and find the number as mentioned before. For the ray distance, multiplying the extrusion number by 3 usually works. For the margin number, try values like 2, 4, 8, 16, or 32. When you find the right number, you will see it from the new map. After all these settings, first select all of your high polys that you need to transfer to the low poly. Then control select your low poly. Make sure you select your image texture in the shader editor. After that, hit the bake button. Depending on your scene, objects, and map size, 1K will be fast enough to see the result in minutes. Now mine is done, I see no obvious artifacts. The yellow part is the back face, which I don't really care about. Then I change the map to 4K or 8K and bake the final normal map. When it's done, make sure to save it in the folder manually. That's it. Thanks for watching. Hopefully, this will help your baking process. See you next time.